Hey everybody, it's Mike AK, that reseller guy. Uh, today we got a little bit different kind of video, not a normal reselling and thrifting type video. I wanna talk about eBay's authenticity guarantee on sports cards. I know they do it in a couple other categories as well, but today we're talking about just sports cards. What happens if you sell a card? I believe it's over 200 or $250 for a raw ungraded card. It has to go through eBay's authenticity guarantee. So uh, I'm gonna go through the process with you. I did sell a very expensive card a couple weeks ago. Uh, so I'm gonna go back. I filmed part of this video when I originally shipped this card out. So you're gonna see the background change, my clothes change and some of the other stuff. And then we'll come back. I'll be wearing these clothes again and then we'll wrap up the video. I got a quick little video to show you how to ship a card out through eBay's authenticity guarantee. First time for me doing this, I'm gonna show you how I'm going to pack the card to ship it out. Then we're gonna follow the process along. How long did it take to get to them? And then how long did it take them to authenticate it, guarantee it, and then mail it out to my eBay customer? Now the card I sold is this Ken Griffey Jr. Bat Relic card. This sold for $700, $699.99 uh, with free shipping. So uh, I'm gonna show you the steps that I'm gonna take to package it up. Now, first you see it already right here. I got this card in a rigid top loader and then I have it in a team bag as well. So it's sealed in here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape it to a piece of cardboard. That's about card size. For whatever reason, it really doesn't matter which way you put it up or down. I just always like to put the relic side down for whatever reason. That's just my thing, do whichever way you want. Get some tape here and we're gonna tape it onto this piece of cardboard. Now you don't need to overdo it. You don't need to use heavy strapping tape or use a tape gun and put it down like that. You want this card generally pretty easy to get off by the recipient. In this case, it's the authenticator. I am gonna put tape on all four sides of it. Make sure that it gets on there and that it doesn't slide off. So you can see, not a big deal. I just put it on there with four pieces of tape. Uh, I'm also gonna put an invoice in there. That's very important should this card get lost in the mail somewhere along the way. You wanna have an invoice inside that box. My invoice is right here, you can't see the other side, but I will include that in the box that I'm gonna use. That way, should it get lost, the post office can open the box and find out who it should be going to. So anyway, here's the card here. I'm then gonna put it inside this bubble mailer. Now, no, I'm not gonna ship it out in just this bubble mailer, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it inside here along with my invoice. All right, so that's stage one. Now, again, I'm not gonna ship it out just like this. This very easily could get uh, damaged during shipping. So I wanna put it into a nice dirty box here. So I got it in my bubble mailer. I'm gonna go ahead and seal this as part one. And then we're gonna put it inside this box. Now, I also need to fill this with some paper here to make sure that it's not sliding around too much. Make sure that it's nice and sturdy and uh, secure inside the box. Two pieces of paper should do it, so fill that in here. Fills it up pretty nicely. The box I'm using is a 10 by seven by three box. I use these for a lot of different things, graded card shipping as well, so these are nice boxes to use. Uh, this box here, uh, nice and secure. I'm gonna go ahead and tape this edge here. Got one side tape. I will tape it more once I get it weighed and get my shipping label done. So next thing we gotta do, we gotta go ahead and weigh this. So let's check it out. It's not gonna weigh a whole lot. It's a small box with a card and a bubble mailer in here. My guess is it's right at seven ounces and that's it, 6.7 according to my scale. So let's go to eBay. We're gonna type it in. We're gonna see how much it costs to ship and then also how much it costs to insure this because this is an expensive card. I wanna make sure that I have some insurance to protect me in case it does get damaged or lost during shipping. So the actual postage part is pretty cheap as far as just the weight and size, but what you're paying for is a signature confirmation and additional insurance on here. So I'm gonna actually spend $17 to have this protected during shipping. Now you can risk it. You don't have to pay for the extra insurance. You do have to pay for the uh, signature confirmation per eBay because of the amount that it's sold for, but I'm gonna put that extra amount on there. I don't mind uh, making a, a good amount of profit on this item. So we're gonna go ahead and spend $17.54 to ship this out. It's all ready for me to take to the post office. Now today is September 12th. So we're gonna go ahead and track this, see how long it takes. This isn't the end of the video. We're gonna do a little more. I'm gonna let you know how long it took to get to the authenticating company, make sure that they uh, get it and receive it when they sign for it. And then how long it takes them to actually send it out a day or two, I think is what it's supposed to take uh, for them to send it out to the end customer and how long it takes for them to get it. So uh, it takes a few extra days in this process. That way the buyer knows that they're getting a legit authentic card and uh, no shenanigans are going on. So stay tuned and let's see uh, what happens along the way. All right, so you can see, you saw how I did in that process, how I went through and I packaged that card up. Now I went, maybe went a little bit overboard, but when I'm shipping a more valuable card like that, I wanted to make sure that it's, that it's well protected. Some people still just put it into a bubble mailer and send it out. I don't know, but I think you need to put it in bubble mailer, put it in a box, make sure that it gets there uh, perfectly safe. 
All right, so let's go through the timeline of how everything went with this transaction. Now, I sold the card. I got to look over at my screen a couple of times, make sure I'm getting the dates exactly right. Uh, the buyer bought it on the 10th of September, which was a Saturday. So obviously I wasn't able to ship it until Monday and that was the 12th. I went and got it all packaged up. You saw me doing that and I got that shipped out on the 12th. Now, uh, the buyer, let me see if I can see on the screen where he is located. It's not on my screen right here. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but it went to a third party authenticator. This happens with any ungraded card it has to go uh, to them. Again, it has to be over $200, $250. Uh, I'll double check and I'll throw the dollar amount up somewhere on the screen here. And they verify that the card is legit. It hasn't been altered. It hasn't been trimmed. It's not, not a fake autograph, all that type of stuff. There's a lot of shenanigans that go on in the sports card world as well as any collectible world. world. And especially with vintage cards, there's a lot of forgeries and fakes and trimming and altering and stuff that goes on. And I think that's more of what the authenticity guarantee is for. But in this case, my card was expensive, so it needed to be checked as well. So I mailed it to the authenticator. Uh, they received it on the 15th and they sent me this email. I'll pop it up on the screen once they were able to verify and check it. Showed that it was good. The card was legit. No alterations. Now, they do state in there that, the, that it has either a relic or an autograph. And they're not in there to verify those pieces the card they're just to verify that that card itself is genuine and that's what they did uh, they go through and they repackage that card as well and if i can find a picture of it they do something a little weird they put it in like this little portfolio and ship it off to the buyer I'll, again i'll throw a picture on the screen if i can find one find one of those in like google images somewhere and they ship that to the end buyer who bought the card originally from me uh, they got the card on the 18th so it wasn't too bad i shipped it on the 12th the guarantee or the guarantee company got it on the 15th and then the buyer got it on the 18th. So still they bought it on the 10th, got on the 18th, eight days for the whole process. Uh, just a couple extra days uh, for it to be authenticated, which I definitely think is worth it when you're buying something more expensive and you're not quite sure, especially on a vintage card. You definitely want to go through a guarantee like this when buying cards online. So what does that say about the whole process? I'll give the whole thing a big thumbs up. I mean, definitely I had no problems. The card went through authentication fine. The buyer got it fine. Now, the one thing I will state, now whether you're buying a card or selling a card, it's great to get that feedback or to leave that feedback. The buyer that got this never left me feedback on this. Uh, it has been about three weeks since that card was bought and he still never left me feedback. Now, again, I show that, see that it's delivered. I assume they were happy with it because they haven't contacted me on an eight or a $700 card. But if you buy something expensive, if you buy something at all, you should go in and leave feedback. Take one day, go in and leave 10, 20 feedbacks off, off all the stuff that you've bought over the last couple of weeks. Uh, definitely the uh, sellers will appreciate it as I would, especially on a $700 card. So as I stated, uh, I'm perfectly happy with how this went. Would have no problem in the future if I have to use this service again or if I buy an expensive card that's ungraded off of eBay using that service, make sure that they'll check it and get me the card too. So I uh, just want to roll you through the process of how everything was and how it went. And uh, yeah, it was all thumbs up at this end. All right, that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I'll say in this video too, if you're still watching, go back to Monday's video. I'm doing videos every day this week. I'm doing a giveaway contest on Monday. The drawing or the, not the drawing, the winner will be announced on Friday. They're going to win a free prize and please watch all the videos this week. Give them all thumbs up. I like your comments down below and all of that jib jab that we're supposed to say here on YouTube. Subscribe, thumbs up, notification bell. All right. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.